Hey guys, welcome back to Life of Bliss. Today is a follow-up video on the Emotiva XPA DR3 amplifier. This is Emotiva's differential reference line of amps that uses a fully differential design to power your speakers. What does that mean? Well, I'll be showing you guys here in just a bit when I open up both the DR3 and Emotiva's XPA7, which is not a fully differential amplifier, to compare the two. First, let's go over some quick specs. The Emotiva DR3 weighs in at just under 50 pounds. With the attached feet, it stands 8 inches high, 17 inches wide, and 19 inches deep, as do all of the amps in the XPA line. The front LED panel has an indicator for each channel that can be turned off with a switch in the back. The power button sporting the Emotiva logo is orange on standby and illuminates a soft blue when turned on. Now this power button will stay on even if you disable the LED lights on the front panel, so just something to keep in mind. On the back, you'll find the power switch, power cable plug, fuse, LED status on and off switch, and a 3.5 millimeter trigger in and out. Now, one thing I really like is when you have multiple XPA amplifiers hooked up via the trigger wire, the turn on sequence is almost perfectly in sync. I don't know why, I just really find that satisfying. Continuing on, each channel has an unbalanced RCA and a balanced XLR input with a switch to alternate between the two. Below you'll see some of the biggest 5-way binding posts I've ever seen. Power is rated at 450 watts per channel at 8 ohms and 600 watts per channel at 4 ohms. Total harmonic distortion is rated at 0.008% at 100 watts RMS at 8 ohms and raises to a 0.1% at power levels above 100 watts. The DR3 is a Class H amplifier, meaning that it provides Class AB amplification at lower voltages and Class H amplification at higher voltages. I go over this a little bit more in the unboxing video for the DR3, so I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Now, I've had the Emotiva DR3 in my home theater for a few months now, powering my front stage, which consists of the 1299s from DIY Sound Group. Now, these are a kit from DIY Sound Group that I built boxes for and finished in a matte black color. If you're interested in seeing on how those were built, I'll leave a card up here above to show you that process. But these are rated at 99 decibels at 2.83 volts at one meter, which just means to say they play 99 decibels roughly at one watt at roughly one meter. Now with speaker systems, when you double your input wattage, you'll get a three decibel increase in sound output. So that means at one watt, I'm getting 99 decibels of sound out of these speakers. When you double that to two watts, you get 102 decibels. Double that again to four watts, you'll get 105 decibels of output. And double that to eight watts, I'll get roughly 108 decibels of output and so on. Now I mentioned all that to get the point across that these are very sensitive speakers and they really don't need a ton of power to start making a lot of noise. Now the DR3 is rated at 450 watts per channel at 8 ohms and 600 watts per channel at 4 ohms. That is some massive power that may seem a little bit overkill for the speakers that I have. Those speakers have the potential to play over 120 decibels at my seating position if each speaker was fed 450 watts. Not something I would suggest if you want to continue hearing well. Now music and movies are dynamic sound, meaning that they have different power requirements from one instant to the next. In other words, it's not just a continuous sine wave that needs constant power playing the entire time. Although I may not need 450 watts going to each channel at all times, the headroom from having a power amplifier with more power than you'll most likely use is going to ensure that the dynamics of the soundtrack are being played back without being suppressed or distorted. Now some of the more recent movies I've watched at or near reference levels with the DR3 have been Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, Ford vs Ferrari, and Midway. Every explosion, revving engine, airplane crash, and blaster firing came through the speakers clean, distortion free, and I never had the sense that any part of the amp was struggling to keep up with the demand. For music, my go-to discs are Hans Zimmer Live in Prague and The Greatest Showman. These discs have such a diverse group of songs in them, and the DR3 was able to play everything back over the 1299s with finesse and authority. Now, if you saw my review video on Emotiva's XPA7 amplifier, I did mention there was a little bit of humming or buzzing coming over the compression drivers in my 1299s. Now, when I hooked my speakers up to the DR3, there was still just a slight faint buzzing sound that, uh, as I mentioned, I can't even hear in my listening position. I have to be about two, three feet away from the speakers and be ear level to really hear it but it was still there. It was slightly softer using the DR3, I felt like, than the XPA7, but even running all of the speakers through my receiver and powering it with the Yamaha RXA3070, 
there was still that buzz. So it leads me to believe that it's not the amplifiers making that signal issue, it's more coming from the receiver outputs um, that's, that's causing that issue. So I did wanna mention that it did reduce it slightly, but that buzz was still there. Now, unfortunately, I was using RCAs because the 3070 from Yamaha does not have XLR outputs. That would most likely completely negate any buzzing or, or humming like that going on in your speakers. But like I said, unfortunately, I was not able to test that. Now, one other thing to mention on my time with the DR3, it never overheated or really got super hot while in use. My receiver always ran about five to 10 degrees warmer than both the XPA7 and the DR3, which is something to consider if you're going to be having these in enclosed spaces like I do. Everything is in my rack underneath my stairs in a closet, so it doesn't get a lot of ventilation, so heat is always a concern of mine. Now let's go ahead and open the DR3, see what's inside, and compare it to the XPA7. So here we have the XPA7 on the left and the DR3 on the right, both opened up. Let's just take a quick look on the inside here. Got our power supply coming in the back. Following up to our power source here. We'll show the power source. Um, these are very similar between the two. Uh, the DR3 series has just a slightly different setup for the power source than the regular XPA series, but they look very similar. Here are all the amp modules for the XPA7. They have seven total. Look down the line here. I'll throw some more still images of the amplifiers here towards the end of the video. But here is the DR3 that has six amp modules. So three channels, six amp modules, seven channels, seven amp modules. Why is that? Now well, let's get into it here. So as I mentioned, the DR3 is a fully differential amplifier. I'm not an expert in amp design, but I'm gonna share what I've learned by doing a little research. Single-ended amplifiers like the XPA7 send a signal through one terminal and is grounded on the other. So the positive terminal gets a signal, the negative terminal is grounded. Differential amplifiers send a signal to both the positive and negative terminals, amplifying the difference between the two terminals. So you can take a look here in the XPA7 and see that each positive and negative terminal only have one amp module, sending the signal through one terminal and grounding the other. The DR3 separates the positive and negative terminals and has an amp module for each, sending a signal to both positive and negative terminal. Now, when you have a fully differential input and output, there are a few advantages over a single ended design. First is the reduction in external noise, giving your setup a lower noise floor. This helps reduce any speaker hum or buzz and will increase the ability of your system to become dead quiet in certain scenes from movies and music. The next advantage is a six decibel increase in dynamic range. From what I could find, this is due to the change in phase between the differential outputs, giving a differential amplifier twice the dynamic range of a single ended output with the same voltage swing. Now that is a really dumbed down version of trying to explain and visualize those differences, but like I said, I am no expert in amp design. Now I've really enjoyed my time with the Emotiva DR3 here in my home theater, and this has just reinforced my opinion that Emotiva makes some amazingly detailed and powerful amplifiers for a competitive price. This is definitely an amp to consider to power your LCR front stage, especially if you have some big speakers requiring some big power. The DR3 is currently listed for $19.99 on Emotiva's website, ships for free, and comes with a five-year warranty. Now I'm gonna be leaving some links down below in the description if you guys are interested in the differential reference series of amplifiers that Emotiva has to offer or any of their other home theater products. Thank you to the guys at Emotiva for sending this unit out for review. Thanks for checking out the video and I will see you guys soon. All right, buddy, so after having the XPA7 and the DR3 in the theater for a while, what was your favorite part? Mm. 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 Was it the dynamics? from Baby Shark that shone through with the DR3? Yeah. It was? Or was it the uh, the clarity when watching Daniel Tiger and their voices and, and all the surround effects? Mm. Really? Or was oh. it the toast? Yeah. I want it. There you have it, guys. Emotiva. Decent amplifiers. Great toast. I got it, Dad. You did get it. Thank you, Emma. Good job, buddy. All right, hold over.